A Shalom Akim. I want to say all praise, honor, and glory be to Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rakakwadash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone and to the sincere Akim, you know, throughout the four corners of the wor world, you know, the hopeful elect. My name's Ibadi Allah. And I'm just going to do a little lesson right here. Um, just, you know, um, going off of the, the spirit of yesterday, our camp was, we had a beautiful camp yesterday. You know, through the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahusha, Esau was getting sliced and diced and cut up. You know, being condemned. You know, we were bringing out all the, all the atrocities and and, and all the um, horrific genocide that Esau, the, who was Esau, is the so-called white man, according to the Bible. All right, they're known as the children of Edom or Esau. All right, so we were, you know, basically going through, um, running down his his. Um, his criminal record, pretty much, because Esau, the so-called white man, whenever he has our people, the Israelites, which are you Negroes, you Latinos, you Native American, whenever he has you inside his court systems, he loves to um, read your rap sheet, you know, read every little thing that you ever did wrong, you know, um, according to his bullshit uh, penal code, his bullshit laws. All right. But what about the laws of the most high? The laws that's found written in the in the holy scriptures. What about the, that's the the royal law, as the scriptures uh, refer to it. That's the royal law, you know. And Esau, the so-called white man, is in great violation of breaking. He's broken all the laws of the Bible, man. All right, and he's 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 a criminal on the loose. All right, he hasn't he hasn't paid for his his crimes yet. All right, so I'm just gonna um, bring out some scriptures. Um, let me see where I'm going to start at. All right. Because uh, Esau has to pay for what he did to, to our people. You know, the children of Israel. All right. What he did to the Lord's chosen people. The Lord said, uh, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. Right. All right. The, um, the first scripture I'm going to go to is 2 Thessalonians, uh, the first chapter and the sixth verse. It says, seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you, okay? So it is a righteous thing with the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai. Yahweh is, is the name of the Most High in the ancient Hebrew, and Yahweh Shai is his son's name, who the world ignorantly calls, unknowingly calls Jesus Christ, all right? All right, so it's a righteous thing with, with the Heavenly Father and his son to recompense, what's the word recompense mean? The word recompense means to pay back, okay? All right? To recompense tribulation to, to them that trouble you. So who troubled the nation of Israel at, at, on, a, on a whole, as a whole? All right? You know, who's in rulership right now? You know, who's controlling the earth right now? The wicked, you know, pursuant to Job 9, 24, the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. All right? And by process of elimination, the so-called white man or the Edomites are in rulership right now. And how did they trouble us? They put us, uh, came over here, stole the land that is known as America now. They stole it from our, our brothers, you know, the Native Americans, you know, the so-called Native American Indians and the Seminole Indians, which uh, biblically, their biblical names are the tribes of Gad and Reuben, okay? The Gadites and the Reubenites. This was their land first, all right? They were here first. And, and what did Esau, the so-called white man, come over and do? He came, in over, came over and stole it. He murdered for it. You know? He came um, with subtility at first, you know, as acting like he wanted to befriend, befriend, befriend our brothers. All right? But then, you know, he stabbed them in the back. Uh, John 10 and 10. It reads, uh, the, the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill. All right? And that, that's the M. M.O. or the modus operandi of the so-called white man, you know, all he does is steal and to kill and murder and plot and and covet. OK, so it says, uh, seeing it is a righteous thing with the most high to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you and to you who are troubled rest with us. Who's the ones that's that's troubled as uh, that's sighing and crying for all the abominations that are being done in the midst thereof in this world is the elect, the elect of the nation of Israel that come back to their 
their nationality to come back to keeping the uh, law, statutes, and commandments and come back to the the, uh, the true name of Yahweh, Bashem Yahweh Shai, and learn their, their, their ancient language, their, their um, um, how you say, native language, which is the Hebrew tongue. You know, the Lashawan Kodash, the so-called Hebrew tongue. So you have to know all of these, learn all of these things so that you can worship your power and in, tr in truth, you know, in deed and in truth. All right. So it says, and to you who are troubled, rest with us because we're, we're um, vexed by the all these wicked, this wickedness going on in this world. You got transgenders, you got homosexuals, you know, you got lesbians, you got drug dealers, you got murderers of, of our people, you know. Two thirds of our people are gonna die. Also, you know they're gonna be put to death, and we hate two thirds of our people more than more than Esau almost, man. Sometimes we do. All right, you know that's why they gotta be taken out of the way. Just like during the time of Egypt, the, the Lord killed off two thirds of the, those wicked Israelites and made them wander in the desert until that generation died off. You know it's gonna be. Similar to in this time, you know, the Lord is going to kill or uh, do away with two thirds of his uh, his own people, wicked niggas, spicks and wetbacks and Uncle Tomahawks that don't want to get right. They don't want to uh, acknowledge the ways of the Lord, come back to the ways of the scripture. So it says, uh, when the Lord, Yahweh Shai, shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels, because that's how the Lord is coming back. The scriptures say, um, every eye shall see him. All right. Um, the next scripture I'm going to go to is Galatians 6 and 7, right? Galatians 6 and 7. It says, be not deceived. The most high is not mocked, right? And that's what uh, Esau, the so-called white man, starting with their elites, you know, starting with the Rothschild family, the Rockefellers, you know, all the elite, so-called elite banking families of that run this world now, right now. You know, that's what they think. They think the, the most high is mocked. Because the Most High hasn't hasn't uh, passed judgment on them for the hundreds hundreds of years, you know, of the atrocities that um, they've done to his, the Lord's people, all right. And they make mockery of them. They they, they paint the um, our Lord and the Most High and our Lord as as, as so-called white men, you know, with with leprosy, blonde hair, blue eyes, you know. They they paint the angels as little red leprous devils with wings you know naked babies uh red you know pale babies with wings you know they lied they 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 um they lied and they changed the scriptures you know like we were going into yesterday at the camp about the slave bible how they they took out um passages that are uh, uh, scriptures that condemned them all right you know and the lord says that in the book of revelations that anyone who adds or takes away from from this word, you know, shall have their part taken out of the way of the book of life. So Esau is 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 nowhere, you know. He has no no part in this in this thing, and he knows it. He knows the Most High is against him. You know, the elites of Esau, they know the Most High is not with them, but they're trying to offset uh, the prophecies. Okay. So it says, um, "Be not deceived. The Most High is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth." That shall he also reap. So what has Esau as a nation sown in the, in the, in the earth? They've sown rape, robbery, murder, uh, slavery. All right, genocide. All right, how did you know they came over to this side of the world? Not only did they just steal the land uh, from the native, you know, Gad and Reuben, they also um, went and stole Judah, Benjamin, and Levi from from uh, where we were dwelling and um, we were scattered. After we fled Roman persecution, you know, we were um, our, our people were um, living in the west coast of Africa. He, he came over there and uh, with the help of them Arabs. All right. Them Ishmaelites, them Arabs. And they're going to have they're going to pay, too, for what they did. All right. And um, they rounded us up and, and put us on, on cargo slave ships and brought us here to the Americas so they can uh, we can. Um, do all the, the laborious work, you know, and build up this bitch of a country, man. You know, they had us picking, planting, picking, you know, crops, all right, plowing fields. That's how America was established, 
All right, that's how America was built up. So it says, uh, so for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. So all the things that Esau sown, he's he's gonna reap also, man. All right, and like we always bring out on the street, he's going into captivity. There's no if, ands, or buts, or, or maybes about it, all right? All right, he's going into captivity, right? This is Revelation uh, 13, um, 9 and 10. It says, if any man have an ear, let him hear, all right? It's not talking about physical ears. It's talking about if you have spiritual ears to, to understand this, this parable, this thing, this prophecy. It says, he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity, all right? So who led all uh, the Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, you know, who put them into captivity, all right? The so-called white man, the devil, according to the, the Bible. Esau is the devil. That's why we say the white man, woman, and child, they are the, de the devil according to the Bible, all right? And the word devil simply means deceiver. Here it is. He's your, your natural born enemy. All right. But he's, he'll deceive you into thinking that he's your friend, that he, he has your best interest at heart. All right. That's why you have two thirds of our people. These, these boneheads, they go out and they vote and they, and they, um, they campaign and they vote, you know, for these devils to rule over them. And they, they think they're voting. <laughs> uh, they think their vote really matters and really counts. It doesn't, it doesn't matter who gets up in there they're still their their agenda is to keep you as a slave to keep you as a second class citizen while they remain in rulership okay so it says he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity there's no no if ands or buts about it it says they shall that means it it shall happen it says he that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword right they must be killed with the sword they have to all right that's that's judgment that's righteous judgment of the heavenly father the lord said eye for eye tooth for a tooth you know just weights and measures that's how the most high is you know the most high he's a power of of of, of justice of of judge and of judgment it says um he that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword here is the patience and the faith of the saints See, that's what uh, the saints or what's represent the elect of the nation of Israel. That's what we're patiently waiting for, man. Waiting for our kingdom, you know, to be um, built up. It's being built up spiritually as we, right now as we speak. You know, that's why we have this truth. We have this knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of the scriptures. We have our identity and our nationality back, right? And we're um, standing uh, in great boldness before the face of such has have a have as have afflicted us, you know, and how, you know, everything I was saying earlier, how they afflicted us, they, they put us in hardcore slavery, so now is the time, you know, you know, that we're, we're approaching, and it's an exciting time, you know, we're approaching the dawn, you know, the, the physical manifestation of our kingdom, you know, spiritually, we have the kingdom already, we have this, this knowledge, this knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, this, this is the kingdom of heaven, this truth is the kingdom of heaven. All right. So um, I'm going to go from there. Um, let's see. Obadiah. Let me go to Obadiah. Yeah, man. So it's, it's beautiful, man. You know, to see all these prophecies popping off. You know, like yesterday, the apostles, they went into, um, they brought out, they did the video about how um, the, the over there in Mongolia, the, the bubonic plague is back, man. Back with a vengeance, man. You know all these out, all uh, these uh, pestilences and these di these diseases. All right, that they're uh, Esau. The elites are unleashing on on the, the masses of people. You know, and they're doing that by inspiration of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, because that's why um, the Most High gave Esau the wisdom to to make these diseases. You know, to create these diseases so that they could be used for for His will. Same thing with the thermonuclear missiles, you know, the ICBM intercontinental ballistic missiles were, were given to Esau because it was the will of the Most High that that's how Babylon the Great should be destroyed, which Babylon the Great is America, okay, and that's how America is going to be destroyed, you know, 
Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and the abominations of the earth, is is, is in the Bible is known as is um, known as America. All right. So this is Obadiah verse. Uh, I'll start at verse eight. Obadiah uh, verse eight. It says, "Shall I not in that day, saith the Lord, even destroy the wise men out of Edom?" All right. So the, who are the wise men of Edom? The so-called, uh, what they like to refer to themselves as the Illuminati, uh, you know, or, the, or uh, and their secret societies. You know, they have different names for, for different secret societies that they have, you know. And they call themselves the Illuminated Ones because they said they're they're enlightened, you know. They're, and everybody else is in the dark, okay. And they their, their animalistic symbol is the owl. And they chose the owl, you know. Um, because the owl can see in the dark, all right. The owl is a is a is a bird that has its eye salve, and it can um, it can see see in the dark. It can see clearly in the dark, all right. So that's um, these elites, these so-called elite banking families of the earth. So the Lord said He's going to destroy the wise men out of Edom, all right. Because they're, they're going to be the first. He's going to destroy their kingdom. And they're going to be the first ones. They're not going to die on this side. They're going to. The elite starting with the Rothschilds on down. They're going to be chained up. And they're going to be the f first ones to be carted. Thrown head first into slavery man. They're going to. We're going we're gonna to have that honor. Well, I'm going to read that in a little while. We're going to have that honor to, to bind their nobles with chains and fetters of iron. All right. So it says, um, shall I not in that day save the Lord, Yahweh, Hashem, Shai, even destroy the wise men out of Edom and understanding out of the Mount of Esau? Right. So because um, their understanding they get from the left hand side, you know, from the, the, the demons on the left hand side, which um, the most high controls all of those um, demons anyway. You know, really, they're, they're angels on the left hand side. The Most High controls them, and He uses them to tell Esau, you know, you know, to tell Esau, you know, whatever He wants them to, to believe in, you know, you know. But the time is gonna come where those demons are gonna with, withdraw themselves, you know, they're gonna or uh, withdraw themselves, or they're gonna lie to you, telling you that you can prevail, you know, when <laughs> you know damn well that's not gonna happen. All right, it says, and thy mighty men or teamen shall be dismayed. Who's the mighty men? All of their military might, you know, their sp special forces, you know, all of these these alphabet groups, man. Some certain secret uh, military groups that you don't even we don't even hear about. All right. That's why Esau is proud. He has all this technology, you know, that he trusts in. But who gave you who gave you the knowledge of this technology? The Heavenly Father. All right. So, you know, that's why Esau is a proud man. You know, he. He, he thinks that he's done this, everything, he's conquered the world by his own might, by his own power. Not understanding that it was all biblical prophecy so that he can be destroyed. You know, like the uh, like it says in Romans, um, Romans the ninth chapter, for this purpose have I raised thee up. You know, because Esau is the modern day Pharaoh. You know, just like how the Lord did to um, Pharaoh, the ancient Pharaoh in ancient Egypt, you know built him up so that he can destroy him his kingdom and show his power okay the same thing with esau which is the modern day pharaoh you know the most high has built you up made you proud hardened your heart all right so that you would um um transgress his ways uh, you know uh, enslave his people so that he can judge you all right it says um which we're going to read in the next verse it says, um, to the to the end that every one of the Mount of Esau may be cut off by slaughter. Because eventually, after they serve a thousand years of, of slavery, hardcore slavery, they're going to be destroyed. Pursuant to the book of Obadiah uh, later in the verse. All right. They're going to be rounded up and they're going to be destroyed. OK. All right. Like you got some Israelites saying oh, all of Esau is not going to be destroyed. You know. Here it is right here. Uh, Obadiah, the book Obadiah, verse 18 says, it says, uh, and the house of Jacob shall be a fire. Right. Jacob represents the 12 tribes, you know, all 12 tribes. 
and the house of Joseph a flame. Now, the house of Joseph represents the tribe of Ephraim, you know, Ephraim, you know, which are you so-called Puerto Ricans, you know, the so-called Puerto Ricans and Ephraim, which it represents, you know, because Ephraim was the, uh, the head during the time of the split, you know, Ephraim was the head, head of the northern kingdom, all right, and the head of the southern kingdom of uh, uh, being with Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, the head of that southern kingdom was Judah. But the head of the northern kingdom was was all the rest of the tribe, and Ephraim was the was the dominant head. You know, so all the la so-called Latin Latin um, Latin tribes, and you know um, the Native American tribes, they're gonna flow in the in the spirit with Joseph when when Joseph rises up and they they um, combine with the house of Judah. All right. <laughs> it's gonna be that's gonna unify all the tribe. That's when all the tribes are gonna come together and fight against this devil. You know, that's Esau's the elites of Esau's, that's their biggest fear. You know, their biggest fear is that all the twelve tribes coming together against his ass. Alright. So it says, And the house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame, and the house of Esau for stubble. Now, what is stubble? Stubble is the residue of something after you burn it, all right? And they shall kindle in them and devour them, and there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau, all right? There shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau, for the Lord, Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh, Shai, have spoken it, you know? So there it is. There it is right there, all right? There's not going to be any remaining of them left. After they serve their captivity, after they serve their sentence, all right. Uh, verse, I'll go jump back up. So it says, um, it says um, that every one of the mount of Esau may be cut off by slaughter, which we just read further down. It says, for thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee, and thou shalt be cut off forever. You know, for all of their, their track record. You know. You know, for the criminal record that they've um, they've done against the scriptures and against the Most High, against the scriptures and against the Lord's chosen people, which is us, the Israelites. All right. So so they're going to have to pay, man. They're going to have to pay. Let me see what this uh, have a cool, you know, they're going to have to pay. And it's beautiful. Oh, I'll just I'll just read it. Um. This is Habakkuk chapter 2, verse, uh, I'll read fast. Um, I'll start at 1. It said, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he shall say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. And, you know, this is the prophet Habakkuk. And he said he was going to stand upon his watch and set him upon the tower, meaning, you know, which is a representative, representative of the prophets, you know, watching and 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 being set upon the tower you know we're watching for the prophecies and we're we're out we're on the tower because in the ancient world in the city you had you had towers that surrounded uh, um the gates of the city on all four uh, corners of the city and you had watchmen in those towers that would watch you know for any um invasion or any harm that would come to the city and then they would blow the trumpet and warn the people all right so that's um, parabolic talk uh, referring to the prophets. How we're watching the, for the uh, the prophecies and we're warning the people. That's why the Lord has his his prophets out on the streets, on the highways and the byways, saying, uh, "Come back, you know, repent for the time is short. The Lord is about to make his his return, and we're you know, and we're we're trying to get um um the bride re ready for the uh, the bridegroom." which the bridegroom is Yahweh Shai, you know, because we're, we're going to be married with him when he comes back, you know, when he comes back with the chariots of Israel, which are known in the in the Bible as so-called UFOs, they're, you know, but they refer, they're known in the Bible as the chariots of Israel. That's how the Lord was taken up when you read in the book of Acts, the first chapter, all right? You know, that's how um, the, the chariots are all throughout the Bible. That's how uh, Elijah was taken up uh, uh, when he was with Elisha, you know, Elisha saw him go up, you know, the, the scriptures say that he was parted asunder, you know, basically a, a beam, beamed him up, you know, 
beam them up into the chariot. All right. So that's how the Lord is coming back. So so all of these prophecies are being unfolded right before our eyes. And we're warning the people, you know, so these people don't have any excuse. You don't have any cloak for your sin. Uh, verse two. And he answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. You know, and that's what the ancient prophets did. They wrote down the visions that the heavenly father showed them. All right. They wrote the they wrote down what they saw. Right. And then they made it. They wrote it on t uh, tables or tablets of stone, you know, but now it's in, it's in book form, you know, it's in, it's in uh, book form. You know, that's why we have a, a vision, uh, uh, a thing called the Bible, which the, the Bible Bible is, is a Greek version of saying book. You know, the Holy Bible, the book of truth. The word holy means true and Bible means book, the true book. All right. The book of truth, you know, and and uh, and now because we're at the end, we through the spirit of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, we have all the understanding of the Bible. You know, we have the we know the history, you know, we know and we know the prophecies. All right. So it says, um, for the vision is yet for an appointed time, which the appointed time is, is, is right now. We're in the last days as we speak, you know, the end of uh, Esau, uh, wicked ass kingdom, the end of Babylon, the great the mother of harlots, you know, um, uh, the year of Karagma, you know, which is the mark of the beast being mandated. All right. The mark of the beast, which is that RFID microchip that the Esau's going to make mandatory that whoever takes that chip the most high is going to destroy you all right all right so we're in that we're in that time of, of that prophecy being fulfilled we're in the time of world war three being fulfilled all right starting up okay and and uh what you know once they start world war three you know the lord is right around the corner you know the lord is going to come right while they're fighting each other and then they're going to they're going to turn and try to fight the Lord in the air. All right? And that's written in the book of 2nd Ezra, the 13th chapter. It says, but at the end, it shall speak. It's speaking right now. It's speaking every day, every single day. All right? At the end, it shall speak and not lie. All right? Because the, the, the Lord said in Isaiah uh, 55, he said that his word doesn't go out void, but it accomplishes that which, which he pleases. All right? So anything that the Most High spoke by the uh, by the mouth of his prophets, he's going to make come to pass. And the scriptures say the Lord is not a man that he should lie. All right. So it, if he spoke it, he has to make it come to pass. All right. So it says, um, though it tarry, wait for it because it will surely come. It will not tarry. And it's not tarrying. You know, it's hastening. Actually, it's hastening. You know, everything is moving, moving fast. All right. So, you know, it's, it's a beautiful time, you know, and it's a time, you know, like I said earlier, you know, for two thirds of, of the nation of Israel, we're out. You don't have any cloak for your sins, you know, because the time is short. Um, Revelation. Let me get let me get that. real quick. Revelations, you know, let me get Revelation uh, 12 real quick. Revelations, the 12th chapter says that. um. Well, I'm going to read it right now. Revelation chapter 12, verse, verse 12. It says, Therefore rejoice ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Who's that talking about? That, re that refers to the elect of the nation of Israel. We're going we're gonna to rejoice. You know? We're going to rejoice when the Lord um, destroys Babylon the Great, when he destroys Esau and his, his whole power structure. You know, when everything that we've been reading about and hoping for, when it actually physically comes to pass, you know, we're going to rejoice. We're rejoicing now because we see, we see it. You know, we have the spiritual uh, glasses on. You know, I'm wearing physical glasses, but the scriptures are our spiritual glasses. All right. That we look through so that we can see clearly, more clearly. All right. So we, we see we see these things happening like we see these things like they already happen. All right. It says, therefore, rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. It says, woe to the inhabitants of the earth, right? And for the sea. So woe means destruction, you know? Destruction is, is coming to this earth, 
in all manners of, of different ways, you know, and earthquakes, you know, and wars, rumors of wars, wars, earthquakes, pestilences, all right, which are these different diseases, like, well, uh, you know, you know, the apostles did the, um, the, the video on the bubonic plague, you know, not just that, but there's been a, a, a measles outbreak, all right, coming from them gutter rats, them dirty, filthy Amalekites, all right, spreading, spreading measles all, all everywhere, <laughs> all right, them dirty, dirty ass rats, flea bag, flea bags, you know, but, you know, the point is there, all right, Esau is unleashing these, these different pandemics, these different um, diseases, you know, so, you know, don't be surprised, it's going to turn like that from a, from a, a, a to a global pandemic or a nationwide pandemic or a statewide pandemic like that. You know, you watch movies like Outbreak, um, movies like Contagion, uh, World War Z, I Am Legend, um, 28 Days, 28 Weeks. You know, these are these movies, they have truth in them. You think Esau just makes these movies? No, he's making he's make these movies because these he actually has these diseases that you know he actually has these things and through the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, you know, the Lord is gonna put that spirit on Esau to be the devil. He's gonna show his horns and he's gonna unleash those diseases. But that's gonna kill off, <laughs> you know, two thirds of you you wicked ass Israelites, man. You know, you know. And that's the time of Jacob's trouble. All right. So it says, uh, woe to the inhabitants of the earth and for the sea. It says, for the devil was come down unto you, having great wrath. You know, <laughs> and we always tell you that the white man is the so-called devil. You have and you have our people always trying to justify Esau. But well, that's all right. You know, because he's going to show you real soon when them horns start popping up. You know, he's going to, you know, he's showing you now, but. You know, he's going to really show you once he starts, you know, unleashing these things on you. All right. Uh, when martial law is declared, you know, he starts uh, separating you and killing you and, and taking your children, you know, throwing your ass in concentration camps, you know, you know, um, injecting you with the mark of the beast, the chip, you know, or he's going to give you the option to do it. You better not take it, you know. You know, he's already re releasing these pestilences, but it's going to be on a, a wider scale. So he's going to come down with great wrath because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. Because he knows his kingdom is falling, man. His kingdom is at an end. So he's trying to offset prophecy. He's trying to move and establish his new world order, you know, which his new world order involves enslaving, you know, the children of Israel all over again and putting his mark or his stamp or his um, karagma, he wants to um, put a, a stigma or his mark in you to show you, to show that you're his property. All right? You know? So he's going to come down with great wrath because he knows he has but a short time. You know? Let me go to um, Psalm 17. Yep, because he Esau is being controlled. He's being controlled by by the Most High. This is Psalm seventeen and and, thir and thirteen. It says, "Arise, O Lord, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, disappoint him, cast him down." All right, so the Lord is gonna arise and disappoint Esau, you know, and he's gonna cast him down because Esau's plan is to establish his new world order, you know, he, where he has everything on the planet uh, in his under his um his order you know he wants things in a chaotic chaotic uh way you know where he wants to have you know all kind of faggots and lesbians and all of that you know he, he wants to have a wicked version of how the most high set up you know the earth in the beginning all right because in the beginning of, of creation, the earth was a paradise, all right? Earth was in total harmony and total righteous order. You know, Esau's kingdom is the an exact opposite of that, is in the invertation of that, inverted form of that, all right? So 
you know, the Most High is gonna disappoint him. He's not gonna, he's not gonna fully um establish establish his new world order. All right. It says, Arise, O Lord, Yahweh Bashim Shai, disappoint him, cast him down. All right. He's gonna be taken out of rulership. Right now, he's he's on high. He's on the he's on the throne, so to speak. Most High is about to cast you elites down. All right. You're about to go from riches to rags. All right. From controlling. Having control of everything to being in chains. Starting with you Rothschilds. Alright. It says, deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. Alright. So, you know, the so-called white man Esau is the most high sword or his whipping stick. You know, what do you do with a sword? You kill. You kill with a sword. So the most high is going to use Esau to kill off two-thirds of his uh, people, which refuse to repent. All right. So yeah, because everybody thinks that uh, Esau is going to get off, man. He's so-called white man is not getting off. He's not getting away with anything, man. Not with anything. This is Nahum chapter one, verse three. I'll start at two. It says, "The Most High is jealous, and the Lord Yahweh Ba Shem Yahweh Shai revengeth." Right? You know, because the Most High is going to um fight for us. You know, he's going to revenge us, avenge us. You know, that's why it says in Zephaniah, uh, was that 3 and 8? It says, uh, wait ye upon me to the day that I rise up to the prey. Right. So we got to wait on the Lord. We can't go out and try to take vengeance on our own, you know, and, and, and offset prophecy. You know, that's going to offset prophecy. All right. We got to let things play out until everything is fulfilled. And then the, Lord, the Most High is going to avenge us. He's going to, you know. He's going to avenge us. He's, he's going to give us that the signal when it's time, all right? You know, he's going to give certain of his men spiritual power, you know? And that's how, that's going to be the the um, signal of the, when it's time, you know, for vengeance, all right? So it says, God is je uh, jealous and the Most High, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, revengeth. The Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, revengeth and is furious, all right? Yeah, the Most High and Yahweh Shai, they furious, man. Looking down at all this wickedness going on, man. Seeing transgenders, seeing fucking drag queens of our people, you know? Seeing, you know, seeing lesbians, all right? Seeing drug dealers, seeing murderers, you know? Seeing women out of order, you know? Seeing children, little gremlins out of order. Everything's out, seeing everything out of order. The Most High is furious right now. You want, you know, but he's bound by his word. He's bound by his prophecy. If he said it, he has, you know, you know. But you know, and the scriptures say the Most High is long suffering. He's, he's, you know, Yahweh Shai is on the right hand of the Heavenly Father right now. You know, waiting, man. He can't wait to come back and destroy this place, man. He's itching. He's waiting. He can't wait to come back and, and level this place, man, and get revenge on his enemies. Yeah, because Yahweh Shai has enemies too, man. Like the two um soldiers that pierced him. You know? When they pierced him when he was on when he was on the cross. You know? Starting with them niggas. <laughs> Starting with them devils. He gonna, he gonna get them. Alright, so it says the Lord will take vengeance on his adversaries, and he reserveth wrath for his enemies. Alright, so who who's all these people saying the Lord is all love? God is all love. You know, that's not what the scripture said. That's not what I just read. You know, it said the Lord wants to take vengeance on his adversaries. You know, vengeance is when you pay somebody back for something that they did to you. And he reserveth wrath for his enemies. You know, wrath is anger, man. He reserveth anger for his enemies. Who's that? Esau, these other nations, and two-thirds of our own wicked people. Uh, verse 3, it says, the Lord is slow to anger and great in power. All right. It says, and, and he is, man. That's why he's called the most high. You know, that's why he's known as the ancient of days. He's the most high. He can do whatever he wants to do. All right. He's great in power and he hasn't shown his power in the earth in a while. So that's why <laughs> what I'm going to read in the next script, few scriptures. You know, that's why every everybody is. uh. It's popping style. That's why Esau's proud. That's why all these other nations are proud. That's why two-thirds of Israel are proud against the Most High. All right? 
But wait till, wait till the Most High starts showing showing his power real soon. Watch. Watch how quick they, you know, they, they're going to want to call on the name of the Lord. But it's going to be too it's going to be too late for that shit. All right? It's going to be too late for that. So it says, verse 3, The Lord, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, is slow to anger and great in power and will not at all acquit the wicked. All right? You know, will not at all acquit the wicked, right? Let me see something. Let me let me, let me look up that word. Acquit. All right. Acquit. The definition means to free someone from a criminal charge by a verdict of not guilty. All right. So Esau, you're not gonna you're not gonna be freed from all your charges. You know. You other nations, you're not gonna be freed off all your charges. Two thirds of Israel, you're not gonna be freed off all your all of the charges uh, for you breaking the, the Heavenly Father's commandments. You know, it says um, to absolve, to clear, to exonerate, exculpate, declare innocent, <laughs> pronounce not guilty. All right, all right. So you're not gonna be acquitted. It says, and will not at all acquit the wicked. The Lord, Yahweh Ba'ashim Shai, hath his way in the whirlwind and in the storm. And the clouds are the dust of his feet. Which that goes into the angels and the chariots, man. You know, you know, uh, simultaneously when those missiles are being shot off and the fire, you know, the missiles going to be detonating. That they're going to create uh, the mushroom clouds with that. Is, is that nuclear fire but the chariots also are gonna be um bringing fire man they're gonna be shooting laser beams man the angels all right this is isaiah 14 verse 21 isaiah 14 verse 21 it says um it says prepare slaughter for his children for the iniquity of their fathers see we always bring this out at, at the camp at the camps you know, and Esau always wants to try to uh, cop a plea, cop a plea, man. Oh, that wasn't me. That was my, my forefathers. Well, you are your forefathers because there's a such thing as reincarnation in the in the Bible. All right. The thing that have been is that which shall be. All right. You we've been here many times before. All right. When the scriptures say there's no remembrance of former things, meaning we can't remember our past lives. So you you were actually gonna be paying for your your old sins, all right? You know the elites of Esau, they're gonna be paying for their sins, and the elites of all these other uh, nations, you know, not just the elites, all these other people, Esau, the other nations, and two thirds of our wicked people, they're gonna pay for their you know, for the sins they committed in their past life, all right? But the you know the elect, we committed sins also, you know. You know, the hopeful elect, but, you know, the difference between us is that we repented and we, we came back to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai, and we, we, we uh, repented and, you know, we, we humbled ourselves and we, we did the, well, tried to the best of our ability, do the will, you know, of Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai, by going out, uh, you know, stop, first we stopped um, doing the things, transgressing his laws, and then we learned of him, and then we went out and, 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 and talk about him we preached we preached his word all right so you know that's the difference with us and lord willing you know um through the you know lord abba rapaza abba father will you know the most high will have mercy on it on us and that's you know that's the hope that we have every day you know we're, we're not gonna be saved uh according to our own works you know all right or you know just because we you know whatever we do we did we're not going to be, you know, we're not going to be saved for our works, as, you know, by the mercies of the Heavenly Father. So it says, prepare slaughter for his children, for the iniquity of their fathers, that they do not rise, nor possess the land, nor fill the face of the world with city. So they got to um, pay for the iniquity of their fathers. You know, the track history, the track record of them committing genocide, murder, you know, enslavement of of the Lord's chosen people. They got to pay for that. All right. This is Lamentations 4, verse 21. It says, um, Lamentations 4 and 21. It says, Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom. 
that dwelleth in the land of Uz, right? Who's Edom? Edom is the, the so-called white race as a whole, all right? You, you red devils, because that's what the word Edom means. It means red. They're, they're not white, you know? There's nothing white about them. They are red, you know? That's the mark that the, the Heavenly Father put on them so that w you would know who the wicked was. You know, going all the way back, <laughs> all the way back to Cain, the mark. All right? He was cursed cursed from the earth. That's why they have that leprosy, you know? That's why they, they're, they're, they're pig, uh, they're, they don't have any pigment, you know? Their blood shows forth through their skin. That's why the Esau knows that it's not right to look like that. That's why they try to uh, tan themselves. You know, tanning is a multi-billion dollar business in this world, you know? Because Esau knows that they ain't not supposed to look like that. Or they're, they're, that's a curse to look like that. So it says, Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom, that dwellest in the land of Uz. It says, The cup also shall pass through unto thee. Now, what's the cup? The cup represents captivity, slavery. All right. Here it is. Um, the, the Lord's people went through captivity and slavery for our, for our rebelliousness, for our, our disobeying the Heavenly Father's laws, his statutes and his commandments. All right. So we went through it. So you're going to go through it, too. That cup of hardcore bondage and slavery is going to come pass through to you. It says, uh, the cup also shall pass through unto thee. Thou shalt be drunken and shall make thyself naked. All right. You know, like when you drink from a cup and you're going to drink so much of it down, you're going to be drunken with, with slavery. You're going to be drunken with captivity, you know, with death, with sorrow, with pain. Everything that you put on our people, you know, the scripture said, render double, double unto her according to their works. Verse 22 says, The punishment of thine iniquity is accomplished, O daughter of Zion. And that's that's talking about us, the Israelites, starting with the elect. You know, you know, we're at the, we're almost at the end of our captivity or, or our punishment, you know. That's why we were we were brought here to America to serve punishment. Alright? It was our jail sentence. It wasn't we weren't put here or brought here to prosper. We weren't brought here, you know. Uh, to prosper in the society. We were bought, brought here as a punishment, man. It says, The punishment of thine iniquity is accomplished, O daughter of Zion. He will no more carry thee away into captivity. So the Most High is not, is not we're never going to go into captivity, captivity ever again. All right? This is our last go-round dealing with captivity and slavery and the curses, you know? The curses are going to be lifted off from us, and they're going to go on them. Everything that was on us is going to go on our enemies. It's going to go on Esau and these other nations, all right? You know? And the, just like how the curses cleaved unto us, they're going to cleave unto them, you know? It says, he will no more carry thee away cap into captivity. He will visit thine iniquity, O daughter of Edom. He will discover thy sins, all right? Right, because right now Esau acts like uh, they haven't sinned against the Heavenly Father. You know, the Most High is going to um, he's going to um, revisit you for your sins. Um, this is Isaiah. Let me go to Isaiah 42 and 14. Let me see. I'll start at 13. Isaiah 42 and 13. It says, the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh shall go forth as a mighty man. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. Right? What do you think of when you hear that? Exodus 15 and 3. For the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh is a man of war. And he is. You know? The Heavenly Father and Yahweh Shai, you know, they're, they're men of war. Okay? So when Yahweh Shai comes back, he's coming back in that warlike mentality. He's coming back ready to kill, man. He's going to kill. He's going to do a lot of killing. It tells you in Isaiah, the 63rd chapter, how, how he's going to do so much killing. It's going to stain in all his raiment. All right. You know, Isaiah 66 and 15 tells you, you know, how he's when he comes back with the uh, chariots, says the slain of the Lord shall be many. All right. So it says the Lord, Yahweh shall go forth as a mighty man. 
he shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. All right. He says, he shall cry, yea, roar. He shall prevail against his enemies. And that's why when it says um, um, in Revelations, how every eye shall see him. Because when he comes back, he's going to let out such a shout, you know, such a cry, such a roar. And everybody, everybody's going to be shook, you know, everybody going to be shook. They're going to be scared, trembling, you know, you know, when he comes back and everybody going to know, uh oh, it's, it's that time. It's that day, that day of judgment, you know, it's the time. That's the Lord coming back. They already know. All right. It says he shall prevail against his enemy. It says, it says, I have a long time holding my peace. All right. This is Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. They have a long time holding my peace, their peace. It says, I have been still. All right. And that's why Esau is so proud. He thinks, you know, nothing's happened to him from when he put us into uh, captivity, you know, going into the uh, 1500s, 1600s, all the way up to now. All the, all the atrocities he's done to us. You know, all the genocide he's done to us, you know, all the wickedness he's done, you know, he thinks he thinks that, uh, you know, nothing's going to happen to him. All right. So, um, you know, all the genocide, all the genocide that he's done against against us. All right. He's given given us all uh, di different diseases. He's um, given us fluoridated water, you know, uh, putting chemtrails in the air. Uh, giving us uh, sexually transmitted diseases, um, setting up um, abortion clinics, <laughs> you know, Planned Parenthood, you know, all all of the things, all these things, trying to um, get, putting drugs into our community, crack, heroin, you know, trying to kill us off, all of these things, all right. So you know, all of these things he's been getting away with, and you know, and the Most High has been still letting them, letting them. Uh, you know, prosper in his wickedness so that the Lord can judge him. It says, it says, I have been still and refrained myself. Now will I cry like a travailing woman. I will destroy and devour at once. You know, like a woman travailing, like a woman that's giving birth to a baby, about to give birth to a baby. She's in childbirth or in labor. You know how a woman's in pain and how, how they cry out. You know, that's how the Lord is going to uh, cry. You're going to cry out like that, man. You know? It says, you know he's going to destroy and devour at once, man. He's going he's gonna to catch wreck. You know? He's going to catch wreck. Um, what's the next scripture? Uh, I mean, Psalms. Psalms 50. 50. And uh, I'll start at 16. Let's see. It says, but unto the wicked, the most high safe. What hast thou to do to declare my statutes, or thou, or that thou should take my covenant in thy mouth? And that's what Esau has done, man. He's took, he's taken the Bible, you know. He um, he's changed. He's taken away from the Bible. He's added to the Bible. All right. He took away like we were going into the slave Bibles. Right? He took out passages so that the the, the slaves wouldn't get um get um pumped up or you know so that they wouldn't know um know the truth pretty much he tried to hide he took certain uh, scriptures out to hide the truth from them you know he's added he's added to the word he's added um different kind of bibles uh the new world translation he's added uh um you know he has a feminine a feminist bible you know so all of these things he's he's done he's he's in violation and guilty of but the Lord is asking the question, what, what do you what do you to do have you to do to take my declare his statues or take his covenant in, in in your mouth? You know, seeing thou hatest instruction. Well Esau hates instruction. The so called white race as a whole, they, they hate instruction, man. You know, the most high says, uh, don't do this, that's exactly what they do. It says, And casteth my words behind thee. Right, so Esau he doesn't he doesn't uh, run his society according to the scriptures to the Bible, you know he 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 puts the Bible to the back burner, and um and um rules by his own his own wicked laws his own penal code, all right his own laws. It says 
Um, let's see. Um, yes, it says, When thou sawest a thief, then thou consentest with him and has been partaker with adulterers. You know, you know, Esau is the, the biggest thief, you know. <laughs> you know, it says, Thou givest thy mouth to evil, right? And thy tongue frameth deceit. And that's that's all the um, characteristics of the so-called white man, you know. That's why God said he um he um he speaketh with a forked tongue, you know, referring to you Edomites, you know. And, and what animal has a forked tongue? A serpent, a snake. All right, you know, because that's what Esau is. That's why you white people are. You nothing but snakes, devils, and snakes. It says, "Thou sittest and speakest against thy brother." All right, because they everything that they do, they do the elites of Edom or Esau, they do against their brother, which is us, Jacob. We are their brother. All right, but they broke that. They broke that um covenant. You know, they broke that. All right, it says like because uh, everything that they do is is to destroy Jacob. And basically, they're um they're trying to get their birthright back. You know, but the birthright right was already promised to it promised to us you know that's what, hence uh, the, the name Jacob which means supplanter you know our forefather Jacob supplanted their forefather Esau for his for his birthright and it was all set up in the spirit because the scripture said the elder shall serve the younger all right you know who came out first all uh, uh, read all over like a hairy garment was Esau and then Jacob his brother came out and his hand held his brother his his brother Esau's heel. Jacob held Esau's heel. I mean he held which was symbolic uh, a symbolic um thing showing how we're gonna pull them out of rulership. Alright? And we're you know, through the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, through this truth, you know, through this word, through the different camps, through the internet, you know, these different shows, he's being he's being exposed. He's, and he's being he's losing his rulership all right it says uh and in the nation of israel the elect of the nation of israel is uh, waking up they're rising up standing upon their feet you know all right so it says um thou sittest and speakest against thy brother thou slanderest thine own mother's son this is the point verse 21 says these things hast thou done and i kept silence so the Most High allowed allowed you to do these things, and He kept silent, man. You know, so thou thoughtest that I was altogether such a one as thyself, and you thought the Most High was with you, because He He's been silent. He hasn't He hasn't done anything or said anything. You know, it says, um, but I will reprove thee and set them in order before thine eyes. You know, so the Most High is reproving them. That's why um, we're the mouthpiece of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. You know, the prophet starting with the apostles, a great millstone. You know, Apostle Tahar on down. All right, and the, and the rest of the elect brothers that scattered. You know, abroad. You know, throughout the world, the different uh, GMS camps that's popping up, and you know, and anybody that teaches the same doctrine that we teach, you don't have to uh, per se have the name. GMS on your on your your page or you know in your group, you know. But if you teach in the same spirit, you teach the same doctrine, you know, the same way like the apostles do, like we do, you know. Then you know you're part of you might you know per adventure, part of the elect, hopeful elect. Said, so, but I will reprove thee and set them in order before thine eyes and we're being set in order right before their eyes the elites that's why their elites are scared man they're shook you know they see all these israelite groups popping up you know see all the videos going up on youtube all right and these different um social media sites and then uh, and that's why they um they're trying to um hinder that you know that's one of the reasons why um youtube said um you got you have to have a thousand subscribers on your page for you to upload videos Okay, all right, <laughs> you know, so you know that's crazy, man. You know they're trying to stop this word. This word is 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 hurting them. This truth is hurting them. All right, um, from there I'm gonna go to Ecclesiastes eight and eleven. 
you know what I'm saying? Ecclesiastes 8 and 11, because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, therefore the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. Right? So it says, because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. So the, the Most High, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, they don't have to, um, when you do something wicked, judge you right then and there. All right? They can, they can just let you wax worse and worse and worse and get prouder, more prideful, more prideful, and, you know, until, and then let your sins um, pile up and you get proud. All right? That's why it says, um, it says, therefore, the heart, or which the word heart there in the Hebrew is lab, which means your mind. Therefore, the mind of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. Right. They, they, they feel confident in doing evil because the Most High hasn't done anything to them yet. So they wax worse and worse. All right. Um, this is Jeremiah. Let's see. Jeremiah 49, 49, and I'll start at 12. Jeremiah 49, verse 12. For thus saith the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, Behold, they whose judgment was not to drink of the cup have assuredly drunken. So like we, I went into earlier, the cup represents a hardcore slavery or captivity, bondage. All right? Which are uh, us being Israelites, being God's chosen people, pursuant to Deuteronomy 7 and 6, that we're the chosen people of God above all people on the planet of the, of the planet Earth, right? It wasn't our judgment to drink of slavery. We were, our, our, uh, we were set up to rule and, and rule this earth and have all other nations in subjection underneath us and us be righteous. Uh, keeping our heavenly Father's laws, but we broke His His covenant. We broke His law, statutes, and commandments, and He put curses upon us and put all our enemies all over us and put us on the bottom and put them on the top. But originally, it wasn't our judgment to drink of the, of the cup or to go through slavery. But we we assuredly drank of that cup. You know that's why you see the um the pictures of you know the history books of slavery. You know what they did to the Negroes? They lynched us. You know, they burnt us. They tarred and feathered us. They sick dogs on us. You know, they separated our families. Uh, you know, they raped our, our women and our wives. You know, they made us pick cotton. They beat us. They, they You know, they oppressed us in, in every way imaginable. You know, you just watch different mo movies like Roots, Mandingo, Drum, you know, um, Django, you know. Um, you know, they got countless movies showing, portraying, um, oh, 12 years a slave. All right. That's another one, you know, portraying all the atrocities they did to us. Watch some of those movies, you know, watch some of those movies, even, you know, and uh, you gotta, you gotta, you know, two thirds of our people, you know, they don't, they don't want to acknowledge the truth, man. You know, that was back then. I don't like watching slave movies. I don't, I don't like dealing with that. I don't. I don't like dealing in the past. I'm dealing in the future. Well, if you don't know your past, you don't you don't know who you are. You don't know your history. How can you know anything about yourself? You know that's that's why the scriptures say our people are willingly ignorant, man. They want they don't want to know. They don't want to know the truth, man. Because the truth hurts. All right. So it says, um, they whose judgment, who it says, behold, they whose judgment was not to drink of the cup have assuredly drunken. And art thou he all that shall altogether go unpunished? All right, that's a question the Most High is po posing to Esau, you know, to the elites of Esau, man, and, and all the rest of you, Edomites, but starting with the elites. Are you going to go unpunished, Rothschild, Rockefeller? <laughs> you think you're not going <laughs> to go into slavery? Your ass is getting carted headfirst into slavery real soon. You cocksuckers, man, you know? For all, for all the things that you've done against against the children of Israel, it says, "And and art thou he that shall altogether go unpunished? Thou shalt not go unpunished." Right? The Heavenly Father say, "You you not gonna go unpunished. You are not gonna be acquitted." All right, but thou shalt surely drink of it. 
Yeah, you should surely, definitely drink of it. For I have sworn by myself, right? The Most High, he, 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 he swore by his own name, by himself. Save the Lord, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh that Basra shall become a desolation, a reproach, a waste, and a curse. You know, which Basra, Basra represents uh, right now spiritually America, you know, Babylon the Great. It says, it says, shall become a desolation, a reproach, a waste, you know, a curse, and all the cities thereof shall be perpetual waste. Because once these missiles are hit over here in America, no, no people are ever going to dwell here again. The scripture said it's only, it's only going to be for uh, wild desert creatures. All right. Um, and... I'm going to get the last scripture. I'm going to go to Psalm. No, I'm going to read uh, two more scriptures. Let me go to Ezra 7. Let me see. Uh, Ezra 9 and 7. Ezra 9. And I'll start at 7. 7 through 9. This is the book of Ezra, chapter 9. Uh, start at verse 7. Yeah, sir, this is a beautiful time, brothers, man. We on, we're almost out of here, man. It says, since the days of our fathers, we have been in great trespass unto this day, you know? And that, that's a true saying, you know? The children of Israel, we've been in captivity under every nation, man. Under every nation, under heaven, you know, on the earth. All right? And we have been in great trespass unto this day, unto this very day, man. You know, what, what day today? Today is... May 5th, 2019, all right, until this very day, all right, and and for our iniquities have we, our kings and our priests, been delivered into the hand of the kings of the lands, right, you know, our kings went into captivity too, man, you know, they went into captivity under the, these other heathen kings, all right, it says, oh, to the sword, right, they was killing us with the sword, to captivity, you know, hardcore bondage and slavery, and to a spoil. They spoiled us. Whatever we had, they took. And to confusion of face as it is this day. Right. Confusion of face, you know. Us being without, you know, without the truth, man. We were we were without the truth for a long, long period of time, you know. But then we kept we would get it back and then we'd go off again, we lose it again, you know. But this time we're not gonna lose this truth, man. We're not gonna, you know, we're not gonna lose this truth. And there's also twofold spiritually going into, you know, the Israelite foreigners, you know, Israelite foreigners. They're coming back to their to the to the fold now too. All right, coming back to the um the fold of the nation of Israel. All right, it says as it is this day. It says and now for a little space. Grace hath been showed from the Lord, Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, our power. Right. Grace has been showed unto us because he gave us this knowledge, this truth. He gave us this understanding, you know, of his son. Okay. It says, um, it says to leave us a remnant to escape. All right? That remnant is, is one third, you know, the hopeful elect, you know. You know, two parts shall be cut off and die, but I will bring the third part through the fire. The third part is dealing with the one-third of the nation of Israel, all right? One-third out of every Israelite on the planet Earth, you know? Which the Israelites are you Negroes, you Latinos, you Native American, all right? You know? So that's the remnant is talking about, the one-third, the elect, starting with the 144,000 and then the one-third. Which the one third is within the hundred forty four. Uh, the hundred forty four thousand is within the one third. It says to leave us a remnant to escape, and to give us a nail in his holy place. All right, you know. So we have we have we're we're a nail is something that's fast, and you you hammer it, and it's it's, it's steadfast, it's, it's stead steadfast there. You know. So we have a nail, or we have a position. A, a steadfast position in this truth and the you know in the holy place it represents being in this knowledge that our power may lighten our eyes and that's what he did he opened our eyes you know to the ways wicked ways of this world to this truth to who our enemies are all right 
It says, and give us a little reviving in our bondage, right? Because even right now, we're still in captivity. We're still in bondage. You know, we still got to um, go to the uh, our enemy for the want of all things. We gotta, we're subject to payments. You got to get up and bust our ass working. You know, I'm at work right now. I just, you know, stopped it, you know, through the video, through this this beautiful video, you know, through the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. But, uh, you know, yeah, so the Lord gave us a little reviving, you know. You know, we don't have the full kingdom because we're still in captivity, but we have this truth, man, which is beautiful, man. You know, we have we have this knowledge. It says, um, for we were bondmen, yet our power hath not forsaken us. So that's the reason why I went here. You know, even though we're, we're you know, we're in captivity and we're bondmen, you know, in this kingdom. And we were bondmen in other kingdoms too, all right? But yet, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai never forsook us, you know? He, he always had that remnant, that remnant, that, that, you know, that elect, that elect number. He always had that, had them. It says, uh, our power hath not forsaken us in our bondage, but hath ex extended mercy unto us in the sight of the kings of Persia. So this was during the time when we were in captivity under the, the medial Persian Empire, all right? And nowadays we're we're in, we're in um, captivity in the modern day Babylon, all right? So the same, you know, even though it's a different captivity, like I said, we were in captivity under many nations, you know? The Babylon, the ancient Babylonians, the, the, the medial Persian Empire, um, the Greek Empire, the Roman Empire, all the way up to now. Which is the modern modern day Roman Empire, known as America or Babylon the Great. So, so the the Most High has extended mercy unto us in the sight of of the kings of Persia, but now in the kings of, you know, a, a modern day Babylon. Which is who are those kings? The Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, the Duponts, you know, the Gettys, the Schiffs, the Vanderbilts, all of those elite banking Edomite families. It says to give us a reviving, right? Revive it. To revive it means to bring somebody back <laughs> from a dead state or from a sleep st a state of sleep or a dead state, you know? So through this through this knowledge, the Most High brought us back, made brought us back alive. He revived us. It says to give us a reviving to set up the house of our power and to repair the desolations thereof, and to give us a wall in Judah and in Jerusalem, right? You know, so the Most High, you know, He revived us. He set up the house of our power. You know, we, you know, we started uh, knowing our identity. You know, uh, realizing that we're the Israelites, we're God's chosen people. You know, we came back to our laws, our statutes, our commandments, our high holy days. You know, keeping the Sabbath day, keeping the high holy days. You know, and we came back, you know, to learning our identity and, and teaching, you know, going out on the highways and the byways and teaching it and, and uh, um, gathering fruit, you know, and, and building up the kingdom of heaven. You know, every every time you, um, you teach a sincere brother, you know, you, 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 he's the, the, each, each brother is like a brick building up the kingdom, you know, you know, we're like, we're like stones or bricks, you know. And each one of us, we, we make up, you know, the hopeful elect. They make up the uh, the kingdom of heaven. It says, um, and to um, and to repair the desolations thereof. You know, what are those desolations? You know, the the tribes. You know, the different tribes were destroyed. They, Judah wasn't calling themselves Judah. They were calling they were calling themselves uh, niggers. You know, Negroes, African Americans. You know, Ephraim was calling them Puerto Puerto Ricans, a rich port. You know, Issachar calling himself Mexi Mexicans, you know, all of these different bywords, those, you know, so Judah, you know, our, our real tribal names, Judah, Benjamin, Levi, Simeon, Zebulun, etc. you know, those, they were des desolate, you know, nobody was, was calling themselves by those names, but now we, we're coming back to our, our identity. It says, and to give us a wall in Judah and in Jerusalem. Okay, and the, the last scripture I'm going to go to is Psalms, let me see, 149, which is one of my favorite scriptures, man. 
one of my favorite scriptures. I'll, uh, you know, I'll read the, the whole chapter is good. It's, it's nine verses. But, oh, man, I pray. I pray it soon, brothers. There's a Psalm 149 and 1. It says, Praise ye the Lord, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Right? What's the new song? The new song is, is, is really the old song, but it's new to us because it hasn't been heard in so long, which is this truth. You know? We're singing every time we um we do videos or we go out on the on the highways and the byways at the different camps, you know, we're singing the song. We're singing the song of Moses, you know, we're singing the song. The new song, the song that had hadn't been heard in a long time. It says, "And in His praise in the congregation of saints, right? And we're singing His praise in the congregation of the saints, which is the hopeful elect." It says, "Let Israel rejoice in Him that made Him, right? Which is Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai. You know, rejoicing in His in His name and in Him. You know, the fact that He had mercy on us. That He, you know." Or that the fact that he sent uh, Yahweh Shai, you know, to die on the cross for, you know, first the elect, the elect, you know, sins and ultimately, you know, to um, redeem all of Israel. You know, once the kingdom is set up, because once once the two thirds die on this side, they're going to be born again into the kingdom and they're not going to go off. You know, they're not going to go off anymore. They're going to be totally righteous, you know. So it says, let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Right? Our king is Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai. So let them praise his name in the dance. You know? So we're supposed to praise his name, you know? For you to praise his name, you have to know his name. And his name is not in English. It's not in Greek. It's not Jehovah. It's not Yahweh. It's not Ahia. You know? You got to know... The, the Lashwan Kodash. You got to speak his name in the Hebrew tongue. You know? And the scripture said, he said his name, he told Moses, when Moses asked, what should I, who shall I say have sent me? He said, tell him I am has sent you. I am, that I am. How do you say I am or he is in, in, in the Hebrew tongue? Yahweh. Yah means he, means he and Hawa means to be. You know, he he be or I am, you know, Yahweh. And his son's name is I am the deliverer or he is the deliverer. Deliverer. Yah, meaning he, Hawashai means deliver, deliverer or, or savior. You know, he's the deliverer, the savior for who? For only the nation of Israel, you know, pursuant to uh, Matthew's one twenty one, for he shall save his people from their sins. All right, so it says, um, let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praises unto him with the timbrel and the harp. Yeah, man, that's what we're going to be doing, man. <laughs> you know, I mean, we're doing it now spiritually, but in the, in, once it, man, we're going to be so, so happy in the kingdom, man. It's going to be beautiful, man, because it's going to be so beautiful. It says, for the Lord, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, had taketh pleasure in his people. You know, he take his pleasure in, in his people that do his will. You know, right now, he uh, is only dealing with the elect, the one third. Two, Most High doesn't consider two thirds of Israel his people right now. It says he will beautify, but in the kingdom, you know, all of Israel will be his people. It says he will beautify the meek with salvation. It says let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Well, you know, it's not talking about now. And now you wake up on in the morning, you know, you know, on your bed and you you like, fuck, I got to go to work. I got to go slave for the devil. You know, you're not you're not in the, you're not singing aloud. You're not joyful when you wake up. You know, you're in captivity, man. How You know, but in the kingdom, we're going to we going to that's when we're going to get a chance to uh, really um, feel feel what it's going to be like. Like on a small level in that movie Coming to America, you know, when Eddie Murphy woke up and he had all, you know, he had the music, they had played music, he was waking up to music being played, you know, um, servants, he had servants, you know, he had women, and he had servants, and everything was at his beck and call, so that's that's what it's, it's going to be like for us, even, even, no, it's going to be, that's just a small minute thing, it's going to be even greater 
other than that for us. So it says, um, let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Let them let the high praises of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai be in their mouth and their two edged sword in their hand. So we're going to have swords in our hand. What are we going to do with these swords? It says to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people. So we're going to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people. What people? Esau and these other nations. All right. We're going to pay their ass back, man. For a thousand years, man. We're going to have their ass. We're going to fuck their ass up. All right. Excuse my French. It says to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. All right. So we're going to bind their. We're going to slap chains on their kings, man. You know. And then we're going to bind their nobles with fetters of iron, you know. The kings of this world, starting with the Rothschild family and all, all these other international banking families, we you gonna you know we gonna have that we gonna have that honor like the next verse is gonna say. It says to execute upon them the judgment written. Alright, what's the judgment written? He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. What we read earlier, you know. You know, he he that uh, killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. That, that's the judgment you know it says this honor have all his saints praise ye the Lord Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai yep and that's you know that's the time that we're waiting for Akim so Abba you know I pray this was edifying and Abba I'll catch you on the next show Shalom Akim